My question is, is there any role or place for choice, Lisa? If my unconscious is maybe telling me about this fear that I have also been finding and judging while being awake from sleep state, is there anything to do? What is there to surrender? There's the appearance of choice on the human level. So in every moment it appears like the human chooses. So like to so say, if I just pick up my necklace, I can seemingly choose to move it from one hand to the other. So there's the appearance of choice. On the human level, it appears like you have choice. If it didn't appear like you had choice, you'd feel like you're in a cage. So it appears like you can have choice. And then there also appears on the human level that you can just be on automatic. So you can be driving the car and there's nobody driving. You can be singing a song and there's nobody singing, it's just on automatic. And it's all on automatic, whether you have appear to have a choice or whether you're driving the car and it's on automatic, it's all automatic. The, the question is, where do these thoughts and these feelings appear from? So where does the thought to choose something, to choose to do this and move this appear from? When was the beginning of it? So in this moment, you can ask yourself that, like, when does somebody choose? So right here, right now, you can ask yourself that. Like, where is that somebody that chooses? So a thought appears, and that thought is saying, this is me, and then it gets stuck to an image of you. But actually, in this very moment, there's simply a thought appearing from no place that cannot be located or found. This me is a complete fallacy. That's one thing. And then on the other level is like in time, if you look back in the storyline, like when does a choice begin and when does a choice end? Like when did you begin to choose to get into this subject? When did you choose to have your partner? Like cho choice is a never ending succession of events, which is beautiful because when you look in the time and the apparent timeline and it's always reflecting back oneness, one action leads to another action, to another, to another, to another. And there's no independent action. There's not one action that everyone can like separate from the rest of life. Everything is dependent on everything else. Is there anything to do? What is there to surrender? So if you're asking if there's anything to do, then on the human level, get to know your body. Get to know what your body is saying. And then on the absolute level, like you can't do anything on the absolute level, but to, to remember the absolute, then listen to non-duality, like keep listening to the subject. And if you feel drawn to ask who you are or to meditate, do that. Um, but on the doing level, on the human level, get to know your body because this will make you a more balanced and relaxed character. And in that, there's the possibility of something else being seen, not by you. But when the person is really deeply suffering and in lots of lies and in lots of tension, then um, how can something else be talked about? How can there be the possibility for something else? So get to know in every moment what your body's saying. You might think you know what your body's saying, but what is your actual body saying in every moment? What does your heart say? What does your sacral chakra say? What does your root chakra say? What does your third eye say? Your throat say? What else does the solar plexus say? The mind lies. The surface stories are normally about trying to hold up an image of you that is best fitting, that looks the best, that seems the best. And it's an energy release, like moaning about someone because somebody's upset you or made your image look bad. What does your body actually say? Your thoughts are always about maintaining you, so they're not true. Often they're not true. It's very difficult to, to really do this for a lot of people because we have this ideal, this image of ourselves that we want to live up to, and this image of ourselves is somebody that like runs through poppy fields and has wings popping out of the back and a heart the size of Timbuktu and um, always does good things and always does nice things. And when you begin to go into the body, you begin to realize that you're an animal, that you come from a manimal on the human level. 
and that you have animal tendencies. You have the tendency to compete. You have the possibility to be bad and good. You have the possibility to do ugliness and beauty. You have all these possibilities. And accepting that is part of the drama of this. Accepting the shadow as well as the light is part of the drama of this waking up process. Seeing that on the human level there is the possibility for opposites. It's a mammal, it's derived from a mammal. And then, and then with the identification with the, perfect, the person and with trying to live up to the Im imagination of perfection, of being a perfect person walking through time, with all of that, what's happened is there's been um, a psychological disbalance and psychological chaos has taken over. And with this, this um, image of being perfect, it's created lots of thoughts about you not being perfect or not making or failing um, or not being good enough or being better than. And so there's like all this, these thoughts and ideas and feelings to wade through to get to your basic feelings. And your basic feelings are that of a mammal on the human level. Is it's, you know, dependent on your particular genetic makeup, but it's basically to preside, to, to mate, to have babies. Not everyone is designed to have that. Um, to, um, to partner, to survive, to trade. To do daily things, to have joy, to have community, 